Okay, so, so far you know all of the exact values, but using the information you have, you can actually find out a whole bunch, heaps and heaps, heaps and heaps and heaps of exact values. You could find out if I said sine 120, if I said sine 150, if I said sine 135, if I said cosine negative 135, or cosine uh, 305, you could, uh, sorry, 300, you could find that. There are a whole bunch of exact values that you can find, but to do it, you need to know this table pretty much off by heart, and you need to know how to use the unit circle, because we can move through the unit circle. So I'm going to show you quickly how to move through the unit circle and how that works. So here's the question, find cosine 120. Now in order to find cosine 120, I'm going to start from here and move 120 degrees this way. So 90 plus 30. Okay, and you can see that I've drawn that line, cosine 120. This is a 120 degree angle. Now if that's a 120 degree angle, then I can tell you with certainty that this is a 60 degree angle. That's an important concept. Step one, if we want to find this unit circle, draw it in, starting from here and rotating around. It shouldn't be hard to see that I can go down here and draw myself a right angle triangle with a 60 degree angle in here. That's, that's, that's sort of our second step here. We've got a right angle triangle. That's excellent. Now, where we go to from here depends upon symmetry. If I draw a line along here like this, I'm back into the first quadrant. I can draw a triangle there, and that triangle also has an angle of 60 degrees. Now, you've seen that triangle before. We've dealt with it before. So if you've seen that triangle before, then we know that this triangle and this triangle have the same height because they're symmetrical. And we know from previous experience that cos theta is equal to the x value and sine theta is equal to the y value. Now if these triangles have the same height and the same hypotenuse and the same angles, then the x values of them must also both be the same. And if cos theta is equal to the x value, then we know that cos theta of 120, the thing that we're finding, is equal to cos theta of this triangle, because they're symmetrical. So cos 120 is actually equal to cos 60. And cos 60 is simple because we know cos 60. Cos 60 one half. So, using this symmetrical method, we can say that cos 120 is equal to cos 60, one half. But, look carefully, this is a Cartesian plane. It's a Cartesian plane. And cos is equal to the x value. Now, the x value of this dot is not positive. Because here's the origin, the x value is here. It would actually be negative. So the x value of this is one half. But the x value of this is negative a half. So cos 120 isn't actually equal to cos 60. It's equal to negative cos 60. Which means that cos 120 is not one half, it's negative one half. So there's a look at how we can use our symmetry here. We can actually use that symmetry all around the circle. We can move into the third quadrant down here, and we can move into the fourth quadrant down here. And we've got symmetry all the way around this circle. So what that means is I can go all the way around to here. That's 180 plus 60. So cos 120 is equal to negative cos 60. Cos 240 is also equal to negative cos 60. 
And then if I come all the way around to here, I end up at there, which is cos 300, or 300. And if I want to find cos 300, then the x value of this dot is going to be positive. So it's going to be cos 60. So, we always refer back to quadrant 1, because we know all of quadrant 1 because of this table. And then we use symmetry to figure out whether it should be positive or negative. Now, luckily, there's a handy way to remember this. C, A, S, T. Now, the way that we read this is cast. And what it says is that all ratios, all ratios, are going to be positive in this quadrant. What it says is that sine ratios and only sine ratios are going to be positive if they're in this quadrant. Tan ratios are going to be positive in this quadrant, which means sine and cosine ratios are negative in this quadrant. And cosine ratios are going to be positive in this quadrant, which means that sine and tan ratios are going to be negative in that quadrant. Okay, lots to take in. If you're confused, that's okay. We're going to go through a bunch of these questions so you can see a step-by-step -step process for dealing with this.